Good morning, my name is Matt Sullivan. I'm the Director of Planning and Development for the Town of Wolfboro here with the November Coffee and Connections. Uh, happy to be with you this morning. Uh, what I want to talk about today is actually the Capital Improvement Plan. And if you've seen our prior versions of Coffee and Connections, I actually talked a little bit about the Capital Improvement Plan, which is known more commonly as a CIP. But what I'm going to present today is actually the 2019 through 2028 CIP plan as it stands right now. Now, You'll note that that's a 10-year plan. That's because the CIP is really a long-term uh, planning document for our capital projects within town. Uh, and those capital projects can be a couple different things. They can be sort of one-time larger projects. They tend to be over $100,000 in scope. They may be larger projects that are made about up of several different elements totaling $100,000 or more. But again, they tend to be pretty significant projects that you may see on the town warrant in March of that year. So what I'm gonna do today is walk through the CIP as it stands for 2019. And I'm really gonna focus on our 2019 projects, those that you'll hear about as part of the upcoming warrant. And not so much on some of the out year projects, though I will reference those quickly. So the way we organize our CIP is primarily by department. So the first department that we have up in the CIP is the electrical department. Now, the electric department projects are interesting because they don't really have an impact to the tax rate. In fact, they don't. They're actually paid for by ratepayers. So uh, while there are some large projects here over a million dollars, those are actually already covered within the electrical rates as they're presented to the customer. So in 2019, we're beginning uh, really the first phase of our phase five voltage conversion. And the first element of that project is the uh, construction or reconstruction of substation number four. That's the substation on Laner Street down by the Glendon Street parking lot. Uh, this is a project that is really scheduled to take place after the 390 line reconstruction that was approved in 2019 by the voters. And that project is in 2019 for $1.13 million as it stands right now. And I would note that these numbers are somewhat subject to change because we're a few months out from the Warren article. But that's the primary project for the electric department in 2019. There are a few projects out in 2020, and I won't talk too much about those, but just want to reference them. Uh, the second phase of that, fi that phase five voltage conversion is the forest road conversion. And additionally, we're going to be doing some uh, reconstruction of some submarine lines out to Melody, Keniston, and Barn Door Island. And then lastly, we'll be purchasing hopefully a new bucket truck as well, uh, ME bucket truck number two. So those are some projects that will hopefully be out in 2020. And I would note that the CIP is flexible. That's why it's an annual process that we go through. So some of these projects that you see in 2020 might actually be pushed out more depending on how funding works out for the electric department. So that's a start with the electric department. Moving on, we get into the, start to get into the public works and highway department. Uh, the Public Works and Highway Department actually has a capital reserve account, which is essentially a savings account, that's the best way to think of it, that the voters in the town contribute to on a regular basis. And the idea is that you save a, a predictable amount of money up, and then you have a plan for how to expend that on a yearly basis. So uh, these 12 projects or so that you see here, they have these little numbers, HD1, HD2. Those are highway department vehicles. And the way we do this is we actually contribute $170,000 annually to this capital reserve account. And then we plan our expenditures based on the public works director's recommendations. So for 2019, we have three purchases that are planned. The first is uh, HD10, which is a 1.5 dump slash pickup truck. The second is actually uh, HD19, which is a front end loader. And the third is uh, solid waste vehicle number one. That's a one uh, ton dump truck. So those are the three, uh, three expenditures that are planned for 2019. Now what's interesting about that again is that you'll only see on the warrant the $170,000 contribution that's planned to the capital reserve account, but we'll actually be expending $370,000 in order to purchase those vehicles. And again, that's because we've built up a savings of money over time. Uh, one thing I want to note is that looking out to 2020, you'll see that we actually don't have any purchases planned there. And again, that's a, that's a way for us to actually build up our capital reserves. So potentially in 2021 and the years beyond, you'll see some additional expenditures there. But that's what's planned for our highway vehicles. Getting more into the public works side of things, this is where we have some of the more interesting projects. Uh, we have a couple sidewalk projects that so you'll see aren't impacting us in 2019. Those are sort of more in the out years. I just want to note that the Bay Street sidewalk project identified there uh, was approved for preliminary design engineering by the voters in 2018, but we're uh, proposing a construction year of 2020 for that based on what we're seeing. Uh, the first project that you will see in 2019 is our actually a, an annual project, and that is our road maintenance slash upgrades. 
Uh, here, we're planning for an expenditure or a request from the voters of $800,000 in order to do all of our road upgrades for 2019. The second project you'll see is the Dockside Public Restroom Project. Uh, this is a project that was actually approved by the voters in uh, 2018, but due to some delays and some inconsistency with our pricing, uh, we are looking to actually push that project out into 2019 and potentially may need a reallocation of some of the funding that was dedicated in 2018. Uh, additionally, the cost estimate that we first received seemed to be on the low end, and we're now estimating the cost to be around $295,000 based on uh, current construction pricing. Obviously, the construction pricing is up based on the amount of building going on and the demand for contractors. So again, that's $295,000 in 2019. The next is some preliminary design engineering on improvements to Cary Beach. That includes the parking lot, some stormwater management issues, and also the septic over there. So we're looking at sort of a comprehensive solution to that area. And that design engineering is proposed for uh, 2019 there at about $50,000 right now. Third project here, or fourth project, I'm sorry, is actually the Pleasant Valley Road Bridge. And this is a bit complicated. This is a DOT, New Hampshire Department of Tr Transportation, and town shared project. So it's actually an 80-20 split. The state, because it's on the Red List Bridge uh, program, the state takes care of 80% of the project. The town is responsible for 20%. The interesting thing is that the municipality actually has to uh, authorize the full amount of the project, which is about $1.37 million. But the town's required contribution to that, the amount that will actually hit the tax rate, is really only about $275,000. And that's really a critical repair that's necessary, necessary for that Pleasant Valley Road Bridge project. So that's one thing you'll see in 2019 as well. Here, there are quite a few projects out in the 2020 year. I won't go through all of those. Uh, in, many of, in many cases, that's really the construction element of something that was already designed and engineered in a prior year. So moving into the water department, uh, nothing much really to say here. There are actually no significant water upgrades being proposed in 2019. But like the electric department, the water projects are paid through an enterprise fund and therefore they're actually paid for by rates. So if there is a capital project proposed here, it actually doesn't impact the tax rate. It really is paid for already by the rates. And you'll see that out in 2020, we do have a project plan for High and Park. Uh, and that would be a $200,000 project, but again, paid for by the rates and not an impact to the tax rate. Similarly, we have um, some sewer projects, uh, and again, these are somewhat funded by rates, and there's also uh, a portion of this funded by a settlement that you may be aware of that the town received several years ago related to our RIB site. Uh, so for 2019, we have three projects proposed here. The first is the wastewater treatment plant upgrade. That's actually a capital reserve account contribution that happens on an annual basis. Uh, you remember there's a couple that we contribute to now. Um, so this is a $125,000 annual capital reserve contribution that you see on the Warren article. Now, for 2019, we're actually only uh, projecting to expend $62,000 of that. So that's a case where we're actually contributing more than we plan to spend. But you'll see out in 2020, we actually plan to uh, expend $160,000, and that's because we built up that, that capital reserve account. And these are specifically improvements being made to the plant here. Second project in the sewer uh, side of things is actually our sewer rehab. This is really our, our inflow and infiltration effort. Uh, I've talked about this, I know, in the past, and I think I may have talked about it as part of my, one of my prior coffee and connections. This is really imp improvements to our existing sewer system, presenting, preventing water from getting in there that results in more processing our plant and therefore more cost uh, to the users. So here we're proposing um, a $300,000 expenditure to just sort of upgrade our existing infrastructure as part of that sewer rehab project. Third project under sewer is actually uh, some effluent disposal upgrades at the RIB site. That's our rapid infiltration basin. That's our new effluent disposal design that we're sort of working on and piloting right now with the state of New Hampshire. Uh, and that's a $500,000 expenditure plan to continue the permitting design construction of that particular project. Moving into the fire department, uh, the fire department did uh, purchase a truck this last year and the process of sort, in, sort of receiving that and designing that. Now, they are proposing a, con a contribution to their capital reserve account, which they use for apparatus purchase. We contribute uh, $186,000 annual, annually to that account. 
but you'll see that in 2019, no expenditures are planned. However, in 2020, there is a $975,000 expenditure plan to replace Ladder 1. Uh, so you'll see that project coming up in 2020, but nothing proposed in 2019, just a capital reserve account contribution. Police Department is actually somewhat new to the CIP. I'm not sure if they've participated in it before, but uh, they have a significant upgrade coming, and that's the dispatch console. Uh, that is planned for 2022, which lines up when, with when we plan the public safety building upgrade. The dispatch console is a critical part of our uh, emergency response here, obviously. It actually also handles calls for the electric department and public works after our normal business hours, so it goes beyond our emergency services as well. Uh, the approximate price for this dispatch console replacement, it's a complicated uh, technological system, is around $400,000 with some escalation built in. So what's being proposed is to actually create a communications capital reserve account. Uh, and we're planning to contribute $102,000 that annually out to 2022 so that when the time comes, there won't be a, a large impact to the tax rate. We've sort of balanced it at an earlier time. I will also note that although the dispatch console is the primary project here, uh, there are potentially some other expenditures that might come out of this at a later time, uh, including some radios and other communications related devices. Uh, now a couple placeholder projects and bigger projects I want to touch on quickly before we wrap things up today. The first is the public safety building. This has been in the CIP for uh, I would say the last five or so years. It's maintained its spot on the CIP at year 2022. The new part of this is that we have a cost estimate for the project, but we recognize it's very preliminary and that we have to do some more project planning and scoping and even uh, site planning potentially and site selection. So right now this is in the CIP, you can't see here, it's in the CIP for uh, $11.9 million. It's a very large figure. Now we're working on refining that and trying to lower that while still meeting the needs that are required for our emergency services personnel. Um, but what we are planning is in 2019 to actually start uh, contributing to a capital reserve account that already exists for public safety building work. And in 2019, we're proposing a, a contribution of $100,000 with a $200,000 contribution in 2020, $300,000 in 2021, and four hundred dollars out in 2022 so that we can really balance the impact to the tax rate with the potential construction year or approval year of 2022. So the public safety building planning is really active right now. We're doing a lot of work and we want to make sure that we're saving money so that we can uh, limit the impact to the tax rate. A couple other projects I wanted to note quickly. I'm going to note the three placeholders first. There are three projects that the committee is discussing right now but that we don't have really accurate cost estimates for. Uh, that is the Libby Museum Building Improvements, which was part of the CIP last year. The MED community, uh, the MED gener generation building down on Lander Street, a potential reuse opportunity there, but there's a lot of research that needs to be done about what potential reuses might be. Also, uh, the master plan is likely going to recommend a new community center for the, for the town. We don't have a, a cost estimate on that. We have no location, but we want to keep the idea part of the CIP. So that's in there as a placeholder out in our out years. So just to sort of review things in, in, in a final sense, for 2019, our total project expenditures for the town from a capital level is actually about $5.2 million in size. But I want to point out that the impact to the, to the taxpayers, because of our different uh, enterprise funds, uh, some state match, like on the Pleasant Valley Road Bridge project, the actual impact of the tax is only $2.3 million. So again, we're doing $5.2 million worth of work, and really only 2.3 is being passed directly through the tax bills to the, to the voters. Uh, sort of close things out, please recognize this plan may change. We're, we're in October, November right now. We have four to five months until our warrant actually goes to the voters. But this really gives us our first sense of what the critical projects are for 2019, both to the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee as they begin to craft warrant articles and the budget. So this is really an important planning tool for the town of Wolfboro and something that I think our department heads, staff, voters, and certainly our elected officials value. So if you have any interest in participating in this process, we do have four uh, member-at-large seats on an annual basis that are available. Uh, it's actually a fairly competitive process to get into those because it is such an important part of our process here in town. Please let us know if you're interested, and we'll see you next month on Coffee and Connections. Thank you.